Over a few weeks, the anti-Ottomo coalition took shape, drawing in virtually every clan, big and small. The new alliance did not get off to a very good start, however. Nerves were shaken when the Sakai were completely wiped out right after declaring their support. At sea, hundreds of men were killed and dozens of ships were sunk or captured by the dominant Ottomo navy, using their Nanban weaponry to even greater effect than they did on land. Kurokawa pushed the front line forward at Setsu with minimal casualties. The coalition needed to prove that their unity afforded them some strength, and the Azai clan's Grand Army intended to do just that with a counter-attack against Sugatsura. They intend to attack in force before the rest of the men arrive. The right move. But there is an upside. We shall not have to worry about the empty storehouses. If they're empty, Lord, we should tear them down to shore up the walls. Could buy us more time. Was planning on using them for firewood tonight. <laughs> Might not be it tonight, though. Fine, fine, we'll do it. We'll burn the banners if we need to. <sighs> so it all comes down to a gambit. I was too hasty. I should prepare my sword. If this doesn't work, I can at least take a weight off my father's mind. Lord, Lord! Drums sounding from the west! By Christ! Good, good. Hold on everyone, help is on the way. Leave those storehouses standing. They'll be full by day's end. Men shall be our walls. They make better walls anyway, for I've yet to see a wall that riddles you with shot. An interesting idea, actually. Shall I fetch your sword, my lord? No, no. I shan't need it. Hello there and welcome back to Barbarian Masters where right now we are on the defensive as the Azai clan are attacking our castle at Wakasa with Sugutsura's beaten army inside and the castle itself isn't in the best of condition either. All the gates are broken and some of the walls are too. We're going to hold our position as the enemy archers start to whittle us down because their infantry are about to make their assault. Lots of them are coming for this big climb on the northern wall where there's just a tiny little space there where we can try to hold them off so I'm sending some samurai in to block them at that position. Soon they're all climbing, and it's going to be a contest of 10 or so units of Ashigaru versus a couple of units of Samurai. We're going to have several advantages helping us out, one just being the long climb. Many of the enemy will die climbing up and slipping off. That will also make them tired, so we'll be less effective in combat, and our units are better. And because of the small space up there, it's going to be hard to get totally surrounded. So everything is in our favor except numbers, and you can see immediately some of our troops are running off. I think the tight space really glitches out the pathfinding there so it's a bit hard to actually maneuver anyway at the same time we're being attacked on the eastern part of the castle here are a few troops climbing in to do battle with some naginata ashigaru that won't hold the enemy for long but really we're just hoping our archers will take down many enemies before they do too much damage and i'll put more units out there to block the enemy again in a second their archers are actually in a pretty good position for us because they stopped very low down on the hill on the way up to the castle so they can't hit us very well and our gunners are slowly killing them so from now on the enemy archers aren't going to be too much of a problem Really, it's going to come down to, can we win these fights on the walls, in particular the northern wall, because there are so many units coming over the top. We just have to stop at least most of them, so that the other units we have left in the inner part of the castle will be able to deal with anything that's left. And you can see enemy morale is dropping. They're only Ashigaru units, in many cases drafted, so it should be easy to get them to just leave. On the east side, the enemy finally decide to take advantage of the fact that the gates are open and just pour loads of troops in. They probably should have done this to start with. For some reason, they're using lots of archers, which is great, since our Naginata Samurai will be able to hold them in place a lot better. And our own archers are trying to kill the enemy as they come in through the gate. Although, as we see here, for some reason, they're very determined to kill the one or two guys sneaking around the gate here and wasting tons of arrows by missing all the time. But anyway, we should do enough damage there. Some other units have already broken through our Naginatas and will now start climbing their way up to the inner part of the castle, but fortunately in this case there aren't enough to do much damage. You can see more enemy arrows there just hitting the side of the wall. Their angle is too bad to hit anything, so they're just being completely wasted in this fight. 
back on the other side. The enemy's numbers are still swelling, but I'm just pushing out more and more stuff to try and stop them getting any further in. It's starting to look like we can actually stop them along this wall. Plenty of units have routed already, and although there are still loads more coming in, you can still you can see that we're not being overwhelmed here. We still have pretty good presence on the wall and are holding our positions in general. Those few troops that get inside are now going to do battle with our Portuguese troops, who I have as our elite last line of defence, ready to hold off anything that comes their way. And fortunately for us, they are very good. They are the elite of Europe that we're being given here, so they seem to have no trouble at all cutting down the samurai, even though they don't have perhaps the same amount of warrior discipline and such. Superior equipment goes a long way, so we are going to hold our central position against the few units that have made it in so far. Meanwhile, further out, it's just an absolute mosh. We're taking very heavy casualties among the units who are supposed to be stopping the enemy, but the enemy are taking heavy casualties as well, in particular from our arrow fire. Plus, with archers in melee, they're not going to be getting a very good exchange there anyway. So no Daichi Samurai managed to climb their way up now and find our cannons for a nice easy battle, but I'm going to send these Turcos against them as well. And that's another fight where we should be able to win, even though the Turcos are such a small unit, they're so good at fighting that we can easily see off that small group of samurai so they are breaking through here on the northern approach but there's not that many of them left in terms of numbers of units they've lost so much of their initial ashigaru that holding off the remaining units shouldn't be too much of a challenge now and furthermore, our reinforcements are finally arriving. They had to run such a long way to get to the castle on this map and over mountains and such and up this final hill. So they're completely exhausted. They're out of formation and the enemy actually meets them with a couple of units for some reason. They wanted to stop us coming to the castle. So they sent some units on a nice downhill charge. This Nodaiji unit could have got a really good charge there, but I think they were actually doing a movement order rather than an attack order. It didn't look like they were charging properly. All of their officers come to try and stop us as well, so they're going to slam into this fight. Fortunately for us, their officers hit the left side of our formation, where all of our melee units were, whereas if they'd hit the right, they would have run through all our archers. So overall, that was pretty good, and we can start reforming there to get proper battle lines going as we resist that enemy counterattack. And out here elsewhere, there's another quick fight going on that's very much in our favour. So even without those reinforcements arriving, it looks like we've just about defended the castle. Absolutely tons of units defeated on this northern face, and our samurai units are still actually alive. I think we lost one full unit defending here, but we defeated at least 10 enemy units coming over the wall. So overall, that was a great exchange, and the enemy just chain round at this point the rest of the units are going to give up we have successfully defended ourselves and i think we probably just about could have done it without the reinforcements we're in a really bad shape now so we can't really fight anymore but at least the front line remains stable my lord a report from wakasa my lord what's the gist of it lord sugatsura has defeated the sai army headed for the capital and secured all lands of the sakai hmm. did he say anything else he details how the use of Nanban troops was vital in his victory, and recommends we adopt them more widely, my lord. A recommendation? First he takes the capital, and unites the clans against us without my permission, and now he sees fit to tell me what to do. The boy forgets his age and his worth. Take a message back. He is to hold his position and conduct no further advances until he is relieved of command. I'll give him the details of his reassignment in due time. You can tell him, though, that his future in the clan depends on his obedience. Off you go. Yes, my lord. Adjutant, come here. I don't care how you do it but you must get word to Lord Shigenobu that he is to return here at once. We're thrown right into another siege defense, this time at South Tamba against the Owaki, the purple faction. And I had already thought this might happen, so fortunately I've got loads of units in the castle to defend and it should be relatively easy. Just going to set up the archers, ready to stop their main attack coming from the southeast. They've also got troops coming from the northwest and southwest. Some of those troops were archers who were providing a little bit of a challenge because they could take out my spearmen who were waiting to defend against the melee attack before things 
just got going, so I'm having to pull a bit of micro to try and dodge these arrows until the melee troops come into range. And it works pretty well, since there aren't too many archers, you can get around a lot of those volleys. So we just need to draw the enemy in and then get something going there. For the southeast attack, we just want to draw the enemy right up the wall because it's a big climb. They'll lose a lot of troops trying to get in from this angle, so that's all well and good. The fight gets started in the west as the enemy's Ashigaru clash with mine. The clash itself wasn't very favourable because you can see it's really spread out. I'm completely out of formation, so my archers and the enemy archers are now firing into this melee trying to hit one side or the other, but they'll just be hitting both because we're all mixed up. So that means it's going to be extreme casualties for everyone fighting in the melee. A shame, but that is why the units are out there, to delay the enemy and allow us to defeat them. Their casualties hopefully will be worth it and will prevent many more. Meanwhile, they're climbing up the southeastern walls, as I hoped, and losing plenty of Ashigaru and morale on the way. Once they get to the top, they'll have low stamina and will struggle to fight with my men. Their archers being a bit of a nuisance there, shooting down some of my Onobushi. Very nasty. But as for the rest of the units, they are now going to have a difficult fight, even just against my archers on the wall, because they are tired and because they're not very good. All we need to do is kill a few of them. They'll rout, and then all the troops have already climbed up will just be killed as they attempt to escape, because it's not not really possible and that's how we hope to continue the rest of the battle essentially they're just killing unit after unit back on the west side i use some firebomb throwers to disrupt some more enemy units coming over the wall but that's very dangerous since you can actually destroy your own walls with the firebomb so i decided to not really throw too many out there and our initial unit of Longyari Ashigaru that was delaying the enemy has been completely destroyed already but we have taken out a fair few enemy units along the way Back on the southeast corner, looks like we're clearing things up. The first wave of troops that came up the wall have been annihilated. Now they're going to be forced to send up archers and just generally a smaller wave that's less likely to succeed now. So we pretty much have that secured. Just need to prepare ourselves to receive this next wave. There's the remnants of the first wave just being annihilated by our archers. Absolutely no problems there and we still haven't deployed many of our reserve units. On the west side, the enemy are now in full retreat. They all routed after a bit of fighting in that courtyard, and now they're out of there being cut down by arrows as they go, so the defense is successful in that part of the castle. And their second wave attack here just completely failed. They routed as they were climbing up, and that just means they die when they reach the top. Our men just annihilate them as they come over the walls. So that's the enemy army pretty much gone. The battle did continue for a bit, though, because their generals are still out there, and the AI does love to send its generals in right after it's lost everything else just so we can lose them as well. Uh, in this case we actually managed to rout them before they came into the castle which probably was a bad thing because it means we can't definitely kill them but it speeds life up a little bit. Just shoot them with arrows, they're going to run away and that's going to be a successful defence of the castle. Nothing out of the ordinary or unexpected happening there, our reserve force doing its job well and the question will be can we make anything of this victory? One unit lost overall, not too bad, the rest of the army will now replenish back to full strength and the Awaki army in terrible condition, they're even going to have to take winter attrition now, the survivors that is. The only problem is that they actually do have another army. So we can't immediately counterattack and try to just take them down after this win. And we don't know anything about their other army, but we can guess that it's full of samurai. The AI likes to have one good army and one bad, in my experience. And the bad army was the one we just fought, most likely, so the other one's probably really good. We may not be able to just go after it. We can, though, still go after the survivors from that last battle to try and hammer them down. We don't want that army alive, even though it's not very good. It could still go around and destroy farms and the like, so... We'll try and take it down. The balance bar wasn't completely in our favour like I hoped it would be, but I still think it's going to be worth just a quick order resolve here. And we are fortunate in that we don't actually take many casualties at all. As long as the order resolve bar's somewhat in your favour, you usually win. And as long as there are no nearly dead units in your army, you'll probably take no losses in terms of full units. That means you can get all those men back in the next turn or two. We'll just sit in the castle and prepare for a potential second attack that might actually come from their second army at any point. Now with Sugutsura, we've got the remnants of the Azai armies from earlier that we could go after, but his forces aren't in best condition either. The other issue is that because it's winter, we can't move very far, so we may not be able to actually get both of them. I thought we'll just get the one on the left for now, but I didn't realize they're actually in reinforcement range of each other. I thought instinctually they were just about outside of it, but looks like they aren't. So I'm actually not going to bother with that fight, even though we would probably win if we fought it. I don't want to take any losses or take any risks, as it were. We're going to sit in the castle and get our men back before we 
do anything. And ideally, if we make offensives, we don't want to do it in winter anyway. I noticed there was this really high level ninja coming in towards the capital. We're going to have to get rid of him because he might start assassinating people and that could get very messy. So we'll just assassinate him <laughs> preemptively. But we can't really keep doing that. You can see we're losing money right now and doing these assassinations does cost a fair bit of money. So we're going to have to pick our targets in terms of agent actions very carefully. A surprise this morning. Sailing beneath some cliffs in Bizen, the alarm bell was rung and all rushed to their battle stations. The attack, in truth, was but a single arrow with a flat head. It fell from above, bearing a message for me, stamped with the seal of the Otomo Shogunate. I had not seen such a seal before, so its potential legitimacy was lost on me. Still, the message inside was one that I can't say I wasn't expecting. Lord Yoshiaki recalls me to Bungo, on no business in particular. I am fortunate that we have a few hundred men to collect from Setsu to transit back with us. They may soften the blow he has prepared for me. Perhaps he concluded that a Shogun cannot allow the independence that a Daimyo can. Or more likely, that clan coffers have been emptied by war, and my crew are worth more to the Nanban than they are to him. Whatever the case, it appears I can no longer hide until this is all blown over. Instead, we shall sail against the wind, as it were, until death or the eye of the storm is reached. There were lots of naval engagements this turn, in particular around Kyushu, where I'm very eager to clear up any potential threats to our trade nodes in the area. Most of them weren't particularly notable, but there was one important fight that took place further to the east, where I sent my main fleet to attack these ships which I thought were isolated, but actually it was part of a big coalition fleet. There are tons of Boko Boyas right next to one of our trade nodes, so we're going to have to take them down. It's a balanced engagement, but since it's just Boko Boyers and we have five Nanban ships, it's extremely likely that this is a stomp. So all I did was set up my ships in a long line ready to receive the enemy, even though I'm attacking, the reinforcements to naval battles don't have defensive AI in my experience, they'll just attack you anyway. So we don't need to move, that will make my life a tiny bit easier as the player, we'll let the enemy come into our firing zone and then just start firing on them. The shots that were missing against the leading ships actually sometimes hit the ships trailing behind, so the fact they're advancing in a big column formation is pretty useful for us. Once they get a bit closer, our shots will get more accurate and will start to really damage the enemy one ship going down there. The enemy's objective is going to be just to sail right up to our ship to try and use their fire arrows on us, and that is going to work as we've seen many times before. Fire. These Namban ships are very easy to set on fire. Luckily they have so much health that fire doesn't do that much to them. The fire can burn for a very long time without having an effect, especially if you leave the ship on repair mode, which reduces the spread of fires. And while they're focusing on trying to set one ship on fire in particular, all the other ships are just doing damage. We've got Dondibus ships on the flanks here shooting enemy crew members, and the enemy are starting to lose more and more boats just due to sinking from the damage our cannons are doing. Some other boats are coming over to the southern part of our line where they'll just find more cannons to fire at them and their morale is breaking quite easily. That's very nice. The Azai fleet that was leading the attack is really decimated at this point. It's actually a tiny bit inconvenient that they came so close before surrendering or sinking because a lot of these ships are now blocking line of sight for our cannons. So that's going to make it easier for the following ships to make it in, but they're going to find an area full of ships that are already sinking. That's probably not going to be very good for their morale. And many of these boats are just sitting right in front of the cannons asking to be sunk. And it's not just the cannons that do the damage at such a close range as well. While they're near our crew, we can fire at them with the matchlocks from the decks. And that's very effective indeed at just wiping out enemy crew members and sniping them down. So the ships will then rout and then probably just sink due to hull damage over time. You can see from the balance bar that we've effectively already won this. The enemy just aren't getting anywhere with their attack. Some of them did sail past our line, but were probably devastated to find that our ships had guns on the other side as well. So once they're over here, they'll just also get sunk. And now there are fewer of them to fire at. We can focus down ships more easily and make sure we get that critical damage to just eliminate ships from the game. A lot of the ships did go around the end of the line, which was probably the best thing to do. Minimize the amount of fire you take once you get to the other side. 
stupid. As you can see here, shortly after, the entire battle area is just full of sinking ships or surrendered ships that are probably going to sink since they can't repair themselves after they've surrendered. One ship here trying to escape, but you can see it's already starting to list. I think it's taken, taken enough damage from the fight that it didn't actually make it out of this battle before it itself sunk. The enemy fleet has overall just been completely annihilated. Virtually no losses on our side, perhaps a few crew here and there and a bit of hull strength, but overall we are fine. We captured some of the ships that surrendered, but they're not going to be of any use to us. And everything else is now sunk. So that major potential threat to our nearby trading activities has been removed. And that's a nice moral victory for our naval dominance campaign. Tons of ships sunk to the bottom. I'm just going to scupper all the boats we don't need. Because of the financial situation, we need to completely minimize the size of our fleet at the moment so all damaged ships are just going to be thrown out rather than being repaired including this trebuchet Sengoku Bune thing because it was overall pretty useless now we'll just keep hunting more targets and we've also got a battle to attend to down near Kyoto supplies have fallen to critical levels Iwaki patrols block all contact with the rest of the clan the capital wastes away while I watch there is now only one hope that the enemy will supply us. We have two days of food left, but enemy forces are encamped just one day's march to the south. I write this only to leave as record in case I should not return from the venture, so that all might know why I took my army to such dangerous ground. I continue to follow the orders of my lord son and protect the honor of the Otomo by holding the capital in their name know that these words are faithful. Know that, if you have not heard of my death, I still stand watch, still fight for the joyous future we all dream of. Let the ten thousand men of every fief fall on me. I will bear their weight. I will do nothing short of the expectations of my lord, my ancestors, and my heavenly father. I moved out with our forces in the capital to attack the Kyogoku who were approaching from the south. They are reinforced by the Hosokawa, so now it's two armies against our one and a half or so. But I'm hoping still we can achieve a decisive victory with our superior tactics and troop quality. We've got Sugutsura's specially built army of mostly pikes as our front line, so we're going to try and draw the enemy onto them. I'm also going to try and use these horse archers. I've got four units of horse archers currently sneaking around to the enemy's flanks to try and just be annoying and see what we can make the enemy do. What actually happens was a bit interesting. The enemy decided to rotate their whole army formation to start facing those horse archers and that caused their left flank to come into range of my skirmishers while we were just waiting around further away. So now the battle's going to get started a bit earlier than expected, but I'm perfectly willing to let a skirmish go on, because although the enemy may outnumber us in terms of skirmishers, they're all out of formation and they are inferior in quality. The enemy are using their archers to focus on our spear troops behind our skirmish line. That's probably the right thing to do. We immediately started taking pretty large casualties among those units, so I'm having to fall back with our melee line, leaving the skirmishers exposed in order to protect these long yari Ashigaru from casualties because we'll certainly need them as alive as possible later on. Once they're out of danger, we'll just let the skirmish continue. The enemy will switch targets onto our skirmishers, and this is a battle we can win. The enemy are in really bad formations to fight us with, and their troop quality and morale is low, so we're actually going to do massive damage to that component of their army with very minimal losses on our side. Now it was time to try and make some more direct use of our horse archers by attacking the corner of their formation and trying to draw units away so that we can just keep skirmishing backwards and hitting them with arrows. This proved to be significantly less effective than I expected it to be just because these units don't fire very much, they're not very accurate and just in general didn't do much damage. So even with four units of mounted samurai we actually struggled to kill this unit of Ashigaru even after it ran out and then ran back giving us plenty of of chances to shoot it we actually didn't do that much damage at all so I realized that tactic is going to take absolutely forever to make progress against the enemy it's probably better to just advance the whole force and continue skirmishing as we were before so I did just that defeated a couple more archer units and this stirred up the enemy formation and they decided to attack us 
So now we need to defend ourselves. Our horse archers will just run away on skirmish mode. We're going to face the problem now that because I've put my spear line so far back from where my archers are, the enemy's cavalry who are just charging towards our right will have a pretty good chance of actually catching our archers in the open. I'm rushing back to try and get behind our spear walls. We were lucky in that these cavalry here seemed to stop and give up at the last second, allowing us to get behind the spears and then once we were in the safe position, they actually came back to just attack anyway. So that's exactly how I wanted that to go. Didn't really have to go that way the enemy was just nice to us there so now they'll face a very difficult battle against the spear wall and will most likely be defeated quickly now it's time for their infantry to attempt the same thing all running into the long yari ashigaru wall we've seen this is very effective when you're fighting the enemy downhill in particular but now we have a thinner formation and the terrain is even so we'll see how it performs here we're going to get some pretty nasty charges from the enemy samurai but much of that charge is deflected by the pike wall so it doesn't do too much damage to us there we're not looking good on our left flank though, as the enemy chase away our skirmishing horse archers they're almost drawn in and forced to make a big flank attack on us here and there's not much we can do to stop them because all of our infantry are committed to the main fight in the middle of the battle so now we're very exposed over there, at the same time my cavalry are going behind the enemy's army. The enemy have been more careful though, they've got reserve spearmen back here who are able to react to this move and chase my cavalry away so we'll have to do a bit of micro to try and split the group up and still find a way to attack. Speaking of micro and lack thereof, our horse archers are caught in melee by the enemy's infantry. The skirmish mode doesn't work quite famously and your men will get caught eventually if you just try and uh, leave them to skirmish away from the enemy so that's going to keep happening. Now the enemy are actually rear attacking my formation, my archers were in trouble but their attack wasn't with all that much stuff, it's generals, guards and light cavalry. My samurai archers and my uh, nearby gunners should be enough to actually hold them off there and at the same time we're starting to win on the frontline engagements. The Ashigaru can't get through our pike walls and they're going to fall back and uh, where other units weren't actually running away I managed to get a nice rear attack with some light cavalry to demoralize them and break several units. We clear things up in our back lines and really the enemy's rear attack isn't very good because so many of these units are distracted just chasing my horse archers around the place that they're not really committing to the attack that could have won the battle for them by hitting my pike walls from the rear. So that's all very useful for us, we'll continue leading them around while we clear up the rest of their army. All we need to do is use our now freed up Yari Ashigaru to hit enemy units that are still fighting in the rear. Nice pike charges that annihilate enemy units instantly. They're going to rout and then be slaughtered. Just what we need, clearing up the armies before they reach the capital and can do any harm to us. We also killed their general out here in the corner of the map uh, using a big bunch of cavalry that just hunted him down and this is pretty much bringing an end to the fight but there are still units just around the place like these enemy horse archers who actually defeated my horse archers in melee annoyingly so we just had to go around uh, killing them off i eventually found that there were two units of samurai hiding in the woods down here i've seen the ai do this before for some reason specifically two units of both samurai standing on top of each other seems to be a favorite tactic i hit them with a Pike charge from some long Yari Ashigaru and that turns one unit right around, they try to get out of there and at the same time my cavalry arrive to finish off the other unit, finally bringing the battle to a close. So it seems that the simple pike wall tactic is pretty effective, although it's very vulnerable to being outflanked and horse archers don't especially help us with that problem as we've learned, but at least we have now won the first of what's going to be very very many battles for the capital. Major victories on land and at sea were not in short supply, and yet none of them were in any way decisive. The damage done by Otomo forces could far outstrip the damage done to them without the balance of power changing, for the sheer amount of manpower the anti-Otomo coalition possessed was overwhelming. It was coming down to a battle of logistics. Whichever side could mass forces in key positions first would have a chance to change the position of the front line step by step. The Otomo had won the opening in this game, with key positions well defended. But if their defending troops were worn down, they could not be replaced, a weakness from which the coalition enjoyed near immunity.
that is it for this episode. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching, and very special thanks to the officially Devon patrons. There'll be plenty more trials for Kobayakawa, and we're going to have to try and continue the war when we run out of money in the next episode of Barbarian Masters.